Matt Tisdale from NASA's Atmospheric Science Data Center. I'll be showcasing how to utilize some NASA Earth Science data products for weather and climate research. So this will be a lot of resources for individuals that are interested in accessing NASA data products within GIS tools. So I mentioned I'm from the Atmospheric Science Data Center. There are 12 distributed active archive centers that NASA has. The main uh, purpose of these DACs are to process, archive, document, and distribute NASA Earth observing satellite data, as well as uh, field measurement, ground campaigns, as well as airborne campaign data from the Earth observing system, data and information systems. As I mentioned, there's 12 DACs. Each one of those is very science focused. So ours being atmospheric science uh, focus area. There are other DACs across the country. As you can look in California, we have the physical oceanography DAC more geared towards ocean winds, topography, um, looking at ocean currents, those types of things. They have the snow and ice data center, more looking at glaciers, ice sheets. Um, so depending on what science focus area, depends on what data sets they'll have um, and scientists available there. So we're more than just data centers. We have scientists on staff. We also work with the data directly and are always looking to engage with end users on better ways to make that data available and more accessible um, to users. So this is just a quick glance at the NERF NASA Earth Science Fleet. So here around the Earth, you can see a lot of the satellite missions that we have flying along with our international partners. We have instruments on board the International Space Station, as well as CubeSats that have launched. And this is just um, those in orbit. We have a lot of other campaigns that are ongoing um, in airborne, as well as uh, field measurements and, and ground stations as well. And so all those data products from those different missions get fed down to those distributed active archive centers that I just mentioned, those 12. Um, but there's one search interface to access all those data products. So this is the traditional way that end users would access our data products. They come to Earth Data Search. You can put in your temporal, spatial. You can select what variables you're interested in, if there are certain data products or keywords to, to try to find those data products. And then you can go and download each one of those files. So those are HDF and NetCDF, so these multi-dimensional data products, um, as well as some data from airborne and ground stations that are more ASCII or text-based data products. And so what we're trying to do is reach the GIS community to make these more easily usable um, so that you don't have to necessarily download hundreds of these data granules or files um, to then open in ArcGIS Pro or in your desktop GIS tools. So what we're trying to do is looking at the ArcGIS Enterprise and leveraging this ArcGIS platform. So we take these individual HDF and NetCDF data files, we mosaic those together, so you get that full time series, all the available timestamps and variables from all those files together and available within this mosaic. Once that ArcGIS mosaic data set is created, we can then publish that as an ArcGIS image service, as well as enabling that as an OGC, WMS, and a WCS as well. And what this does is allows us now to access um, that same data product, not directly in Pro on our desktops, but make that available to people outside of our organization. So we can make that as a web service that you can use um, through a web browser, accessing that in GIS applications on the web, as well as in desktop applications like ArcGIS Pro. And those ArcGIS image services also give us an additional capability beyond um, our normal data structures is that we can um, do these on the fly computations. So if we had data that was stored in temperature, for example, in Kelvin, and we want to make that available to end users in Celsius and Fahrenheit, on the fly, we can just have that calculated within the browser or within your pro desktop so that when you're asking for that data, you get it in the units that you're interested in. And we don't have to restore that variable three times over to meet all those user needs. And so it saves us a lot of effort on our end with reprocessing data. And so once we have those data sets available, we wanna make those accessible to end users. So we're pushing those out on our NASA ArcGIS online site. So that'll have a lot of the, the premier data services that we have from across those DACs that are GIS enabled within these ArcGIS image services, as well as the OGC services. We also have our story maps um, and other web applications represented there. So that's a, a good place to search and, and find um, those applications and services. We also are working to get more data products integrated into ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. So some of those same story maps um, and layers and things are being um, integrated with the ArcGIS Living Atlas. So we're promoting those content items um, and getting those approved. And so we're 
looking to expand that more and more into the future, getting more data sets uh, brought online. And so really looking for feedback from the community if there are certain data sets that you're interested in as these ArcGIS image services or OGC compliant services, or just um, having issues with using the native HDF or NetCDS in your desktop. We're always looking for feedback to try to improve that experience and make those easier to use from, for the community. So wanted to put a plug as well. So the as this communications team really does an exceptional job putting together these data pathfinders, and these are really focused on use cases within the science community. So we have examples for agricultural and water resources, how to access and use NASA data products along with others um, for these specific science communities or COVID-19 response um, disasters for specific disasters that are occurring. And then one in particular is the GIS data pathfinder, which showcases how to use a lot of NASA data products and various GIS tools. So a lot of the same resources that I just showed for accessing and, and uh, finding those data is within this data pathfinder. And there's also a lot of tutorials uh, baked into there as well. So within that GIS pathfinder, there's tutorials on adding our uh, NASA NetCDF and HDF data products and ArcGIS, how to create mosaic data sets, working with those mosaic data sets directly in Pro, um, a lot of interesting um, finds there and a lot of links and additional tools beyond um, those that I just showcased there. So a great resource for accessing those products. So with that, I wanted to show real quick a demo showing um, accessing some of these data products within ArcGIS Pro. So here we have one particular series um, which measures uh, incoming and outgoing radiation from the Earth. And so here we've added that ArcGIS image service to our Pro desktop. We went into the charting widget and turned that on. So now we're going to look at um, that time series that I mentioned. So this is a year's worth of data that has been queried out of that service for every day um, for over a year. And so you can see all the points there. Um, we picked three points on the map. So these blue dots here are the three locations that it's starting to graph. And so we can graph those, um, look at that time uh, trend, but now we want to do a little bit more. So we can look at the spatial aggregation as well as the temporal aggregation that um, is available in the charting tool. And so maybe we don't want to look at just points, we want to look at a region. Um, so we can draw a polygon and look at the temporal profile of that entire polygon over time. And then we can also um, look at that in different intervals. So if we want to bend that to monthly intervals and look at that over you know, 12 months instead of, you know, 365 days. And now we can bend those into monthly ranges and you can see the graph update there to aggregate those into temporal bins. So that's one way to access and use those in ArcGIS Pro. We can also create Jupyter um, using ArcGIS notebooks um, to create these. So here we're just accessing the same, that same service in a Jupyter notebook um, here. And so we uh, request, we get all the variables that are available out of that service. We can then map and draw the, the data from that service, uh, put that on a map. We can start to interact with that service. So in this case, we're gonna take a world continents file. And so now we wanna subset some of that data. So we don't need the data from the full service. We're just interested in Australia and wanna get the data over Australia. So we can clip the data from that service um, and get that back all through these. Um, existing functions within ArcGIS notebooks. So just another way to interact and use these services. And then the last real quick is just an example of an app that we're working on developing. And this is our data access analytics viewer. And so this is taking the same services for users that may not have access to ArcGIS desktop tools, but they still wanna be able to interact and, and work with the data. So here you can um, play through the time, look at the, the data values as they're changing over time. You can do that same kind of graphing capability where I want to click a point in the map um, and look at the temporal trend. I can also click on that uh, temporal graph. You can see the points there, and the map will update to match that location. So if you're looking at a specific time, you want to see what the data look like, you can do that as well. And then the other capability we're looking at is uh, masking. So a lot of users want to look at just particular data values. So they may only care about the spikes in the data or um, the lower ends of a range or a specific um, event that they're looking for. So they want to look at a very specific range of data. And in this case, we created a masking 
uh, tool so that you can spe specify the min and max um, data values that you're interested in. And then the map will update just to show those. So if you want to look um, at just that specific range, then that capability is available as well. So we're looking at um, expanding this. So really interested from the community, if there's uh, specific services that you're interested in, data products, um, or ways to access those, please reach out and let us know. Thanks.